Okay, so we're going to kick this thing off. Um, we've got really a lot of things to talk about, but we've tried to organize it in a very uh, smooth and logical fashion, believe it or not. Okay, so this is the 20th year. How many people believe that? Yeah. So I'm just, I'm just curious by a show of hands, how many people was this your first DEF CON? So we've scared away everybody else. <laughs> how many people have been here for more than 10 DEF CONs? Wow, right on. And how many people, how many people here are younger than DEF CON? Couple people. How many people were conceived at DEF CON? Yeah. <laughs> Somebody's conceiving right now. Uh, um, <laughs> so, if you hadn't caught on, none of this would have been possible without help from all of our volunteers. We have over 300 volunteers, and that's just the people that directly operate during the con. And uh, that's not counting all the hundreds of people that put on the contests. And so, if you haven't caught on, what I try to do is take t <laughs> is to take 10,000 people but make the convention a little bit more intimate. And the way we do that is we try to take you and force you to participate in contests and events. And next thing you know, you're sitting next to someone at the Lockpick Village, and now you're having a conversation. And, and Lost will talk about it, but the timing of the mating on the badges was designed to just allow you to have a start of a conversation. So you'd be forced to start to talk to people. Isn't that icky? No, that's really cool. So how many people actually met new friends through the badges this year? Yeah. That was a really bit, cool bit of social engineering. So what I want to do is we want to hand it over to Zach Franken, who's been the head of operations for, I don't know, 17? Closer to 18 years. and. Uh, and I want to thank him for all of his years of service. And I also, he's going to pass it off to him to thank everyone that made this possible. We're going to move right on down. So <clears throat> at our 20th year anniversary, some people, um, you know, in the process of rejuvenation, some of our senior staff are moving on to make room for junior staff, which will now be senior staff. So we have a special little uh, surprise for them that they don't really know about yet. So with that, I'd like to hand it off to Zach. Come on up. Let's hear a round of applause. Thanks. Thank you, DEFCON 20. DEFCON, as Jeff already said, couldn't exist with a, a lot of effort from a lot of people. And in the early years, I used to name them all, but now there's 300 of them. I've trimmed it slightly. So, I'd like you, in a few minutes, we'll wait to the end, to put your hands together for the security team, headed by Noid, Pappy, Flea, and CJ. <laughs> Speaker Control, headed by our own Agent X and the Proctor. Lock Heather on the networking team to uh, provide you with porn all weekend long. Major ETA and the whole of Quartermaster sh shipping our shit around, basically. Dispatch for coordinating everything and providing things like lost and found and all these kind of classic little con kind of miscellanea. It's like, I've lost my kid. My kid's run away. We haven't had a runaway in a few years, which kind of makes it not feel like DEF CON. We used to get a runaway every year. Uh, Shell on the hotel and the production team. Ed from Infobooth. Yeah. Come on. These people make your con, guys. <laughs> Bill and Tyler for kicking ass on the reg line. You only had to wait an hour.
Sunshine for Swag, Romer and the vendor team, Pyro and Contest. Neil for doing the program and all the amazing artwork. Nikita for doing the back of house stuff during the year, sorting out all the speakers. Was and Priest, who should be very large and wandering around somewhere. You can't miss him, he's like a house. <laughs> Russ and the documentary crew, our man here. Great Scott and all the talent for creating an amazing set of sounds for DEF CON 20. I just, I just thanked you, it's okay. They were clapping you. No, that's okay. Uh, and finally, the, the Rio. Uh, the Rio have been freaking awesome to us. It's a great hotel. It's a nice hotel. You haven't destroyed it. It didn't catch fire. Well, well no, it didn't catch it. There was a small fire. The hotel didn't catch fire. For that, I'm truly grateful. So I'd like you to put your hands together for Brian, Ryan, Chris and Jennifer that printed out all the graphics. Chris worked 32 hours straight putting down those floor decals. Adam, Janet, Ed. I'd finally like to thank the firemen for making sure the hotel didn't catch fire. And of course, my friend Jeff, who threw this shindig 20 years ago I can't believe it's still fucking going, but it is. I can't believe there's so many people here that had a great time. And most of all, thanks to you. It's you guys that make DEF CON. Thank you so much. Okay, so I'd like to uh, call out um, the first person that we're going to be very sad to see retire. The Lockheed. Yeah. So Lockheed is one of my uh, earliest, one of my earliest friends at DEF CON and one of my uh, really good friends over the years. And I could always count on them. You know how when you go through life you stay in touch with people and then you don't and then you do. Well whenever we got in touch again it was always like no time had passed. And, uh, you know, even when he was like shipping me four gig drives from Dell or getting me Pentium 2, 3 processors back in the day to, you know, now he's, uh, his current career, it's just, we've all moved on, but, but I've always, I've really admired uh, Locke's work and he's kept the network so professional and uh, kept it pumping for, I mean, I never have to worry about the network and that's largely part due to Locke and the team that he's assembled and so we've got, a surprise for you. Russ? No. 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 <laughs> <laughs> We've got a surprise for you in there. Yeah, what do we got in there? No, no, yeah, turn it away from your face. <laughs> so, uh, not knowing when you're going to go, you're going to get an insulated uh, lunch pail. You get a black badge. So. <laughs> So whenever you come on back, you don't have to sweat it. We've got a gift card for you to start your next career. A receipt from Fry's. And a receipt from Fry's. <laughs> we'll be billing you later. <laughs> We've got a whole ton of... <laughs> we took some of our hacker skills and... One, yeah. one two... <laughs> no, <laughs> no, no, no. Of course you have it. Yeah, and then wow. we've got hidden behind you a special custom-made leather jacket for you. Dun, dun, dun. Yeah.
<laughs> Thank you, Jeff. Awkward hug. Ah! <laughs> I'm not Jason Street, but I can try. So the other person that's retiring has also given years and years of service to DEF CON selflessly. You know, never complaining, doing the hard work in the middle of the night, pulling cable. But more than that, she also donates her time to the community, giving back not just to DEF CON, but also to the greater world. And that's Heather. So. Yeah. Now. Now, now your, your prize bag is in black. It'll fit what you're wearing. And you also get a helmet. <laughs> it's still in the con. Yep. So you, anytime you want to visit. <laughs> And a whole lot of new treats. So we can't say enough about your awesome service, and it's just it's really amazing to have worked with you guys. Yeah. Now, uh, now, it's, uh, Locke's not off the hook yet because it's time for him to talk about what happened on the network. <laughs> yep. Oh, wait, we forgot to give her. Uh, yeah, Heather, you're. <laughs> you got to wear them now. That's one. So uh, for those who've been here before, you know I'm famous for my PowerPoint slides at closing. So uh, you know, as, as my last official year up here, I couldn't uh, disappoint the rest of you. Um, oh, I come with accessories this year. So as you know, DEF CON has been canceled. And apparently the Rio got in on it too this year, if you saw any of the signs on Wednesday. Um, me and my team, we're here, you know, we take eight, eight months to prep for this and we're here all week. And we decided we would graph out the amount of work and sleep and play time we have during this week. And you'll notice that there is a uh, pretty consistent trend of less and less sleep every night. I'm currently running on three over the last couple days and uh, I think a whopper. Oh, and some bourbon. <laughs> and when people give out, you know, I really want to thank Cheryl for the recliners and the knock this year. <laughs> they were very handy. Some of the highlights for us this year, real quick. Um, we, I think we really got a lot more involved with what was going on with DEF CON this year in terms of the people in the contests and, and uh, uh, the groups. Uh, it was great to work with LOSS this year and helping him unmoss DOS his own contest on several occasions. Um, we provided him access and web servers and uh, lots of information and sometimes just a quiet place to come say, oh, fuck. Uh, we worked with the ninjas this year to help uh, supply Wi-Fi for Ninjatel, which was uh, you know, quite a bit of fun. I still find it incredibly ironic that people go around all year saying, hey, you know, don't use the wireless at uh, DEF CON, it's a trap, you know, it's the most un unsecured thing in the world. But as soon as people got here and saw a GSM network named NinjaTel, ooh, let's connect to that. <laughs> and then of course, even last night, we were running around helping Crystal Method find bits and parts and, and uh, you know, thanks to CTF, we found the last five blank CDs in the hotel because everyone's moved on to USB and DVDs. So it's been, it's been really great to be so fully involved this year, um, and we, we hope you guys have really enjoyed the whole con. Um, you know, stats and facts. We had a lot of patching to do this year. 
uh, we had 60 physical network drops and, of course, 50 Wi-Fi access points. Uh, actually, I mean uh, 47 now. <laughs> we had three of them burn up, thanks. Just from overuse? Just from overuse. Um, we saw a major shift in usage between the open network and the secure Wi-Fi network this year. The, in the past couple of years as we've had it, uh, only about 25% of people used the secure stuff, again, thinking it was a trap. Uh, but there was certainly a major shift this year, and uh, you know, we really like to thank AT&T for uh, their network being so congested that it brings business to us. On the Wi-Fi, again, uh, you see the number of associations. We were seeing about 1,000 associations an hour on each network. Uh, we had, you know, over 20, just I think by this point, over 2,500 registered users, uh, a lot of unique devices, uh, typically about 600 of you online at any given time. Um, and I'll leave the uh, IDS stats for you, but, you know, people are always fucking around on the network. <laughs> What we did this year was we actually tracked on the secure side when you authenticated where you log which AP you logged in from, and we started creating a heat map. Jeff's been asking for this for years. So we found, of course, you know, the busiest places are where you're walking around and drinking beer. <laughs> you like that? <laughs> and then of course the talking areas as well. So we did a lot of bandwidth. We had 100 megs this year. Uh, really peaked it out on Friday. Looks like you guys lost momentum on Saturday and Sunday. But we also tracked all the internal network traffic. And we were, we were hitting today, Jeff, 400 megabits of internal traffic throughout the entire network. Wow. 57 to the internet, most of it to Jeff's file server. <laughs> and then people fucking around on wireless. A lot of, one, lot of uh, VLANs, a lot of leases. You know, more people were using Wi-Fi wi this year. Thank you. And the big display, last year we did about 500 megs of traffic to the internet. You guys capped a terabyte this year. Well done. So a quick little thing, a, 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 an homage I did for Jeff this year, for those who have been around forever. We had our uh, main web server this year named Tessie A. Ashpool, which as all the educated, civilized people knows, comes from Neuromancer. Neuroman or the Tessie A. Ashpool family was hosted on the Freeside Orbital Station. Back in the day, if you were around during the early DEF CON 1, 2, and 3 years, there was an ISP in Texas called Freeside Communications which is where DEF CON hosted all of, its web, all of its files before the web came around. So this was our little homage to coming full circle and maintaining the, uh, the true hacker culture that's often based in Neuromancer. And finally, you know, the whole staff, we revved up this year to really uh, make sure we had boots on the ground. We finally got DCTV working. So get really excited for uh, DEF CON 21 because we know Romer is. <laughs> okay. So real quick, I know I'm over time, I apologize. Um, the two people that we, Heather and I, are turning this over to have been with us for a number of years now. So I just want to real quick introduce Louise, where are you? Oh, wrong side. Luis will be taking over for me. He's Brazilian. He talks funny. Forgive him. Um, and then Mac here has been working on our infrastructure for a number of years. They're going to be the main faces. As I told Jeff, we may be retiring. We're not divorcing. So you're still going to see me around, Heather around. We're going to be making sure these guys are successful so that you guys have a great experience here. So thank you all very much. And that, by the way, was the temperature gauge to tell you how much in and how much out bandwidth was currently being used. And every time I checked it, it was always at about 90 megabits. So 
We did a lot of traffic. Next up, we're going to have Jason Scott talk a little bit about the people in the orange vests and what we're trying to do with this documentary. You might have noticed them. Hello, everyone. Uh, documentary crew, assemble for a moment. Leave your thing running. Come on, very quickly, guys, very quickly. Uh, hi, everyone. I was contacted in February about, hey, would you like to make a documentary about DEF CON? A group of people who traditionally have shunned, hated, and abused photographers, press, and any sort of any sort of reading. I think Jeff I think Jeff got smart and realized a couple years ago that what he was making was not just a con but making history and that this has become a vital part of people's lives. And I'm very, very, very complimented to feel that they thought I was the one they could trust. As a result, we've had um, all of my crew members come on up, guys. Um, we had two pairs, we had three teams of two people, plus me, plus uh, the producer, Rachel, uh, walking around. We also had a few key people we gave little cameras to, so a little bit of magic has been captured that way. I saw something you don't want to see. <laughs> I'll put it, I'm putting it in anyway, don't worry. But, um, so, so anyway, so I, my previous movies, one was about the magic of computer bulletin board systems, and the previous one was called GitLamp. It was about the world of text adventures. Text adventures are an interesting subject to film in high definition, but what the heck? <laughs> that was 72 interviews filmed over three years. Uh, we have done 150 hours of footage in four days. So um, we're going to have a lot of DEF CON captured. Will we ever get it all? No. But my hope is, is that somebody will be able to take this and show it to someone who has always wondered what they do out in Las Vegas and either go, oh, now I get it, or go, oh, now I get it. <laughs> I apologize to the second group. But I think what I learned most of all, traveling like I did for thousands of miles to interview 45 people before this con started, and what I learned here is that, you know, originally I thought this was just a lattice work of interrelated groups, but it is in fact a burlap sack full of ball bearings smashing into each other, <laughs> all with their own goals. But every single one stood up and said, I believe in DEF CON, I believe in Jeff's dream, and I believe in our people. Without them, we are nothing. Without even any collusion, that was the general group. I'm proud of my community, I'm proud of my friends, and I'm proud that my name is a part of this. And I think the documentary is going to show that too. So please, thanks everyone. And, mm hmm. All right. I'm not, I wasn't going to say, okay. Jeff's giving it to you for free. We'll, we'll certainly set it up. Um, I, I would certainly have it set up that you could optionally, you know, donate if you want. Um, <laughs> look at you, snicker. <laughs> I'm going to remember that every moment I'm at the editing board this next two months. <laughs> anyway, so, um, <laughs> so yeah, I'll be editing. We're going to release it this year. I'll make that happen. So uh, thanks a lot, and uh, thanks for. Uh, the amount of people who got really angry at us for doing this was, was um, amazingly small. Uh, but again, this is a 180 on the policies on, on letting people film in here. And so everyone who saw me go by in the Segway, everybody who saw the, the orange vested people walk in, everybody who looked at us and said, oh yeah, and smiled instead of giving us the finger, thanks. <laughs> now back to filming. So that'll be my uh, Christmas present to everyone. Yeah. Okay, next, next up is Pyro, who's done an amazing job coordinating a record number of contests. Pyro? How is everybody? Did you guys have a good DEF CON? Yeah. Uh, I want to start off first by saying that it was insane. You guys really stepped up. Last year I challenged you that if you had good ideas and good concepts for new contests to respond to the RFI, you did. This year we tracked 56 individual official contests and events. That is a huge record break. Yeah. I want to thank all of you that did uh, come in and play the contest. Who played contest? Raise your hands. Yeah, excellent guys. 
Um, so first off, I want to thank uh, our contest goons. Uh, these guys were amazing. Um, all you guys are exceptional. And whoever's from 303 that's uh, bombing my badge right now, you're a smart ass. <laughs> Here's the battery. Um, Zach, Jeff, and Cheryl, thank you so much for continuing to support contests and events and allowing us to grow this uh, to give back to the community. Um, it's a wonderful thing, and we really appreciate it. Um, no, I'm not going to take up much more time, but I do want to hand you off to uh, Dark Tangent to uh, start talking about contests, and he'll address the Tamper Evident Contest. Thank you. So, so for this year, for the uh, Tamper Evident Contest, it's the third year, and I'm going to change it for next year. So the idea was I'd wanted to do this contest for years, and I finally did it. And I went out and I bought every product I could find that said tamper resistant or tamper proof because I just didn't believe it. And now three years later, we've got tamper evident type contests running all over the world. There's lots of really good and seasoned teams. There's a lot more knowledge in the community. So I'm not going to keep doing that. That's, it's, it's alive now and it's living on its own. So I think what I'm going to do next year is I'm going to take the contest, shorten it to just a day, and I'm going to turn it into a tamper evident like workshop, like a village because you have to buy these things by like the thousands. So I have like 3,000 of this kind of seal and 2,000 of that kind, and I'm never going to get rid of them in my life unless I give them away. <laughs> so next year, come to the village and hang out and if you want to try to defeat some of this stuff. But that means for this year, <laughs> we have some winners. Where's, yeah. And, uh, and I didn't have time to judge it all because I'm running around. So Stitz was uh, stepped in to fill the void and did all the judging. So he has the results for this year. We're going to do a quick badge because it's the last year's accomplishment. Okay, so I've got one really great announcement. The overall winner was Motherfucking Professionals, and this year they're getting an Uber. So if we could have them come up, let them get their just desserts. Datagram, Scorch. Thanks, man. Hugs all around. <laughs> Did you get them to? Who gets the badge? Good job. Man. Who's okay. team leader? Good job, you guys. <laughs> there you go. There's much love within the Tampa Avenue community, as you can tell. So the other one we want to give a shout out to is the MacGyver winner, and that was Void of Void. Uh, if they're here, if they could just stand up. No, I think they had to head out early. So the tier one and second tier winners were motherfucking professionals. They're that amazing. They just win everything. The second tier was, again, Swift for second and third. Or excuse me, for first and second tier. And for tier one, there was a tie between, it was like that when we found it, and Void of Void. And then I need to give a shout out to No Clue Whatsoever. Uh, they actually blew the fuses out in their hotel room trying to win this contest, so. <laughs> and uh, also a big shout out to Network Jesus. Uh, really thanks with the booth and have a great time. See you guys next year. Thank you. All right, next up we have Deviant Olam with his brand new contest, The Black Bag. Woo! Really quick, because I run less shit, I can actually talk for another 30 seconds about this. Come to DC Shoot, how many people came out to the desert to shoot this year? Two days, more people than ever. It actually works so well that I'm gonna drop the prices. We can make the tent rental better. Any surplus that we had, it's going to the Traveling Terabyte Project. If you don't know what that is, Google it, check it out. Also, thank you if you came to see the Goon Band. We rocked it, we loved it, we loved all of you. The torrent's probably gonna be up. Check DEF CON Twitter. Okay. Tool Lockpick Village. How many people learned to pick locks this weekend? How many people taught others? Big, big thanks for letting us to come always. We love doing this. Bobak, Steve, Dr. Transcorch, Char, Doug, Dagor, Keith, Calypso, everyone from Tool, LI, from the goons to the hotel, on down the board who lets us show up with all this shit. We really have a good time. It's such a hoot. All the mini games. You can win awesome shit just in the village. 
But the big game that replaced Gringo Warrior was Black Bag. Instead of being an escape game, which was always kind of a hokey joke, we wanted to make it pen testy. You could break into an office, exfiltrate data. You're doing electronic, physical, everything else. In third, we had Hackers with Harriers. You guys here? Anyway, they win a lot of shit. They were awesome. They were fun. In second, no clue whatsoever, really good showing, would have fucking won if any one of them had gotten a mohawk. You get 10% point bonus if you do. And the top team, really? Top team, the German intruders, are you here? If you're here, you better come up, because look at this fucking shit DT just laid on me. And while they're walking up, everyone from Tools, stand up. Everyone from Tools, stand up. Where are you? Wave your hands. Jump up and down. They're all in the back. Thank everyone in a black Tool shirt. They're the members who make it happen with LI and everyone else. Say something for 30 seconds. Thank you, Deviant. It was a really great challenge. It was fun to compete, and DEF CON was great. Thank you, everybody. All right, next up is Crack Me If You Can. Hi, I'm Hank, and this is Joe. We ran uh, Crack Me If You Can. This is our third year running it. Uh, if you know Minga, he couldn't be here because his wife had a baby last week. We'll, we'll excuse him, but he'll be back next year. We, had, uh, we, d we published 120,000 password hashes, different types, 37 encrypted files, different types, and people tried to crack as many as they could, waited for difficulty, and uh, in third place, our first place winner from last year, Team Inside Pro. In second place, John Users, the John the, uh, John the Ripper user base. And uh, the winner, Team Hashcat. Are there any Hashcat people in the house? OK, maybe not. Uh, my favorite part of the contest actually comes next. We're going to get write-ups from the teams about what they did, what resources they had, how they figured things out, what tools they wrote, if any. We're going to publish those on the website, contest.corelogic.com, or you can go to our Twitter feed, crack me if you can, and you'll get there from there. Thank you. <laughs> Project 2, you guys are up. Hey, DEF CON. Did you know there's a roller derby convention that happens at the same time as DEF CON? I think we need to have a little bit more interaction with these guys, don't you? All right, so we've got the RollerCon Mountain Cats here to present the award for Project 2, which is a low, which is a low commitment puzzle contest. We had 107 teams registered, 56 of them scored, and for those of you who can do the math, that means 51 didn't. For those 51 that didn't score, the next number in the sequence, one, two, three, four, five, is six. Uh, I need, there, we had an honorable mention. We had a shoulder surfer who came in fifth place by just watching over everybody's shoulder. I don't know what you were expecting at DEF CON, but that happens. Um, so the first pace was uh, David and Avil from Swordfish. Um, come on up, man. We got a two-man team. Uh, last year, we handed out goldfish crackers. Uh, we couldn't afford that this time, so we have a uh, can of Pringles. <laughs> and the Roller Girls. <laughs> All right. Briefly, there's a guy in the audience that's lost a laptop, and we have it. So if you're looking for it, it'll be up here in the corner. Next up, we have the Schemaverse DEF CON tournament. Yeah! Woo. Hello, everyone. So the Schemaverse is a space-based game, but it's written completely so you play with SQL. So our, w our winner this year was the same winner we had last year, which is Derpfish. And he gets this wonderful Schemaverse hoodie, being the Supreme Commander. I also had a prize for the best hack, which was 100 bucks, and no one won it, which was ridiculously disappointing. So next year, the prize is going to be $200, unless red doesn't come up on roulette. 
So I want you all to go Schemaverse.com. Rounds go all the time. I need you to start practicing at the game. Next year, we're going to have qualifiers leading up to it. Anyways, thank you very much. Happy DEF CON, everyone. Hack Fortress. Howdy, how's everybody doing? So uh, we ran Hack Fortress again this year. It's our third time. Uh, it's a combination hacking TF2 tournament. Uh, ten, uh, ten players on each team. We had eight teams compete. The winners from this year are actually the returning champions from last year, Team Zelda. Uh, we have some prizes for you. In addition, uh, we'll give you the chance to uh, defend your title at the next Hack Fortress competition, which should be at Shmukon. And uh, Heist now is going to talk about some highlights from the hacking side of the competition. So hack side, we got special mention for Team SFA for their rendition of Unleash the Kraken, which ended up with two large gentlemen hugging on the middle of our floor rolling around. <laughs> we would also like to thank Team Mobile Disco for their useless bribe of a full bottle of Patron after they had already bribed us. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Oh, yeah, this is one of my favorites. Scavenger Hunt. Yeah. I'd also like to mention, uh, for DEF CON 20, these guys have been around forever and a day. And this year was the first year they've qualified as a black badge contest. So when you see all these people run around doing crazy things, there's a lot of purpose behind that. Oh, sorry, requalify. They say that to all the girls. <sighs> hey guys, uh, this is our 15th year for the scavenger hunt here. Uh, as, as my research has done, this is the second longest running tied with CTF. Uh, contest, there is. <laughs> the clock is cute. Uh, <laughs> uh, I would like to state that this year we had a record breaking 37 teams, uh, of which 37 actually competed. Uh, the ninjas gave us a couple of badges on, well, you know, you get people whose aspects are a little high. We had a, I really want to recognize our fourth place team, which was a one-person team who got a late start Saturday afternoon and still came in fourth place. You know what? Go ahead and stand up. I need an adult and a red card. Uh, announcing the uh, rest of our winners, we had the third place team, Full Measures. Second place team, One Lung. I don't know. And the first place team, who will be receiving a black badge and who's still waiting to find out who they are. Um, you know, we went years receiving black badges for, uh, for the scavenger hunt, and we talked to Jeff. We dialed it back to free admission for the following year. Uh, it's been a few years coming with the help of a lot of my staff, my friends, my family, and you know what, even Jeff, every one of you, we've, uh, we've managed to reattain the status of a full black badge competition. Uh, to show my appreciation, I've uh, got Jeff's black badge here, and you know what, I've got my black badge from DEF CON 10 that I'll be awarding to the first place team, uh, who is re-engineering sex toys. Everybody stand up. I'm that guy. We'll, we'll find that badge. It's fine. It's fine. He's good for it. Um, <laughs> guys, uh, here's, a, here's a badge from Jeff, and here's a badge from me. I've, uh, 
I've busted my ass either playing or running or helping or doing anything with this game for 14 years of my life now. Uh, and with that, I'm out. I'm done. I'm, uh, we're going to go ahead and retire this year. I'll help. I'll, uh, I'll observe. You know what? Next year, I've got a plan. I'm, uh, I'm just going to drink. <laughs> Death Con, thank you very much. Next up, we have Network Forensic Puzzle Contest. Team Strawberry, if you're out there, come up as fast as possible. All right, everybody. You're welcome. This is the uh, third time that we've been at DEF CON. It's been absolutely amazing. We had over 350 teams, which was ridiculous. We printed off way too many CDs. We handed out over six or 700. Uh, the average team size was around a little over two people. Uh, 200 people made it past round two. Only four teams actually completed the entire challenge past rounds five and six. Only one team made it without hints, which is Team Strawberry. The other three teams, we had a hack off where they had to compete against each other as we fed out little hints at a time. It was absolutely amazing. Uh, team Strawberries was first place. Uh, Noble Trout was second, Team X third, and Tom Pole third. ForensicsContest.com, we do some stuff throughout the year, but really we build up to DEF CON, so we want to say thanks and see you next year. Thanks. Next up, we have Freaking in the 20th. What's that? No, Freaking. Yeah, Freaking in the 20th. Are you gentlemen here? Okay, they're not here, so we're going to go ahead and pass. They had a really cool contest and had hundreds and hundreds of people play. I'm sure some of you were those. Um, but next we'll move to Bro CTF. What's up, DEF CON? We're Bro CTF. Uh, we're an open war game running for the first year here. Um, so everyone knows if you missed out, you missed out a lot. Everything's going to be online tonight. Uh, GPL V2. If you didn't play, come play later. Um, I want to thank a few people that made this possible this year DJ Cheshire, Mr. Burns, Seamosh, Gunner Base, DC949, Gene Eric, Latera, Mike, and CSUN Layer 8. Without you, this never would have been possible. Um, thank you. In third place, we have Ponies with 900 points. In second place, with only four hours of competition time, Neg9 with 1,000 points. And our first place team with 1,300 points, with every player except for one being their first DEF CON and their first CTF, Team Virgins. We're proud to announce that we're giving out a black badge this year. Bro CTF was uh, pretty brotastic. Um, yeah, the, uh, the uh, actually in the one that's played before, and we. Uh, I ended up playing in the open CTF. We were looking for that, but this was uh, this was an open CTF. These guys did a great job. Challenges were a lot of fun. So thanks, guys. What was the winning strategy? Winning strategy. Uh, strategy. <laughs> strategy? Yeah. So the winning strategy was to actually win. <laughs> Thank you. I think our tape on the microphone's coming undone there. There we go. Okay. Excellent. Next up, one of the longtime favorites of everyone here, Wall of Sheep. How's it going, DEF CON? All right. 11 years of Wall of Sheep. 
Can you believe that? Long time. So this year we wanted to really step it up, kind of change the way that we did things and, and make the, uh, the whole thing a, a new version of the Wall of Sheep. So we, we got a few sponsors to, to pull things together and we wanted to thank those guys, especially Solera, to, to be able to get the money to do so much more than we ever did before. So this year we were able to shepherd a new chapter. We had DJs. So if you see, we have the, the Wall of Sheep DJ shirt. This is Frecocious. You're our lead, one of our lead DJs. We have music going the whole time. We had workshops going. We had tons and tons and tons of things going at, at the wall this year. And that took thousands of pounds of gear from across the U.S. to get here and all sorts of things. And it's, you know, But we want to thank everybody for getting that together. Um, we also did the wireless sheep hunt this year, which was pretty awesome. We had wireless base stations roaming around the con that you had to chase down and bring back for the, for the game. And we had a, that was pretty fun. And um, Damien ran that. Damien. Damien ran that. We got to thank Damien for that. Thanks, Scooter. Yeah. A guy named Scooter won. So if anyone sees him, congratulations. <laughs> Yeah, we also, uh, we also were uh, honored to be able to uh, run Capture the Packet and the Wall of Lambs at uh, DEF CON Kids, uh, where we were able to spend some time with your children um, and our children and uh, teach them how to sniff uh, packets on the wire. Yeah. So, so we put... Yeah. The next generation, baby. You know it. We had a six-year-old girl capturing packets and just owning Wireshark. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. So uh, we haven't given a Sheep of the Year award out for a while, but we decided that we're going to make a Sheep of the Year awards for somebody who is a very famous security researcher. We're not going to call them out, but if you're a security re researcher on Reddit and ask me anything, you make sure that your cookies are not in the clear. <laughs> and to, to continue on, um, none of this would have happened without the, the support of DT and the rest of DEF CON. I mean, thank you so much for everything you guys did for us this year. It was amazing. Um, the network was awesome. It worked. The, the contest area, they, they just anything that blipped, it, they were right on it. It was awesome. And I uh, want to thank the entire Wall of Sheep team. I mean, they humped. At, one of our guys had like, what, 40,000 steps or something in a day going back and forth all over the place. We had pedometers on. It was insane. <laughs> um, all right, let's see. And the next thing that we're doing, we have, we have right here uh, the, the large sheep. We had a, a, a thing for, for uh, Brad, the nurse. And we, we had everybody come up and drop some money up. Yeah. So. So we were able to give, uh, give $360.81 back to someone from our own community that's uh, really special to us. But when I think about that, I kind of go, really? There's like a couple thousand more people than 300. So if everybody put a buck in the coin, we'd have like 10,000 bucks, not 300. So, so, so we don't all look like kind of cheap asses. Maybe we should put some more coins in that before the end of the con. At the end, you know, you find one of us and drop a coin or two in there for him because he could really use our help. And uh, that's all for the Wall of Sheep. Thank you all. Yep. Go ahead. So, so let, me, let us put our new faces on for our other event. So that, yeah, there we go. Yeah, so we also run another event uh, here at DEF CON called Capture the Packet. It's a uh, live network uh, scavenger hunt where you are on a network with ma massive amounts of traffic and you're looking for clues within packets. You have to be really good at uh, uh, looking at uh, network traffic. <coughs> so just to give you a, an idea of, of some of the stuff that we had going on, we invented three new steganography techniques just for this event. And actually, one of the teams did get my Morse code over ICMP. <laughs> yeah, baby. <laughs> so uh, Capture the Packet, we'd like to uh, thank DT and DEF CON for uh, hosting and making Capture the Packet in its third year a Black Badge event. Um, we had over 200 contestants compete, but only in the end only one team uh, could walk away being uh, Capture the Packet uh, winners, and that's Team Strawberries. If you're out there, come up here. Um, uh, I, wanted to also, I also wanted to uh, thank our sponsors, uh, RSA, for donating uh, two 
MacBook Pros to the winning team. Yeah. And, and thank you, uh, DEF CON and DT, for making this a Black Badge event and awarding a Black Badge. Yeah. These guys earned it. They're freaking ninjas. Yes. I don't know if you saw, they won the last contest as well. Yeah. <laughs> um, so next year, uh, we're planning on uh, bringing uh, uh, our uh, best game to this challenge, and we're looking forward for you guys to come up and play. Yeah, one of the comments that we got was, wow, this year's entry round is like twice as hard as last year's final round from some of the guys that played, and they didn't make it to the finals. We really stepped it up for Black Badge, and uh, scoring was a little lower. So <laughs> bring on your A game next year, buddy. Yeah, thanks, guys. Thanks a lot. Next up, we have Crash and Compile. Hey, everybody. This is the third year we did Crash and Compile. And you can tell from my voice that it was a good night. Uh, third year we've done Crash and Compile at DEF CON. Uh, we had a great time. We had the long largest number of registered entries, teams trying to get in. This is the first time we've had to do a pre-qualification round to actually get the number of teams down to the amount of space that we had. Uh, we had an automated grader, which made things a lot more efficient and a lot easier. We had a robotic PDP-11 that one of the teams used to compete on. How often do you get to write mobile applications for a PDP-11? Come on, that's pretty cool. Um, so yeah, we had a grand old time. In third place, we had kind of a, a unique situation. Whenever a uh, problem... Uh, any points that are not claimed at the end of a problem, they get sent to team distraction, whose job is to distract the competing teams from doing their job. And so if, it, if teams don't, don't actually claim those points, they, it makes sense that team distraction should get them. So team distraction came in third place with six points. Second place with te was team Frink Rules, who wrote their own language. They, and first place was uh, team Null String. And he's going to get a black badge this year. Um, so yeah, there he is. Come on up. Run. Thank you. Thank you. This guy's fucking hardcore. He had like titties in his face all the time, and he's in there. Must code. It's fucking awesome. Anyway, I want to say a quick thanks to. Um, all the contestants and all the registered teams, I want to say thanks to Dis Team Distraction. Some of them are still in the room. I want to say thanks to Pyro and Tangent. Uh, Dual Core and Dale Chase for coming out and providing some entertainment. Uh, I want to say thanks to the Rio staff for pulling our asses from the fire. Uh, next year, the registration starts about three months before the con. Hit us up on the forums and uh, send in a registration form. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, everyone. Oh, one more thing real quick. I'm sorry. Anybody who's a contestant, if you're still in the room, please come see me after the award ceremony. I've got a, got a little take-home pint class for you guys with Crash and Kabyle on it. Okay? Thanks. All right. Uh, next, we have 25,000-cent Hacker Pyramid. Hey everyone, uh, Jamie uh, decided he had to go home for some reason, so uh, <clears throat> I'm covering for him. This is the fourth year of Hacker Pyramid. Um, due to the discontinuation of the Canadian penny, um, next year we'll have to have something new other than pennies, but uh, <laughs> this year someone got 10,000 pennies and another uh, 100 and so dollars in Canadian cash because it turns out that 25,000 uh, pennies weighs about $140, and we didn't really want to make any, sorry, 140 pounds, and we didn't want to make anyone carry that home. Um, but we had uh, 11 teams. Uh, Dan Kaminsky, a three-year champion, returned. Um, sadly, he did fail out in the first round, and uh, it happens. Uh, we did get Corey Doctorow to be uh, our special guest for the first night, and uh, sadly, uh, he couldn't stay, so Space Rogue uh, made a special appearance and took his slot. Um, most importantly, um, who came to the fail panel earlier that day? A bunch of people? Um, during part of the fail panel, we actually raised a whole lot of money for the EFF and cancer research, and uh, Pyramid was so inspired that they asked folks to donate more money to cancer research and raised $1,436 to fuck cancer. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, baby. In 40 minutes. 
Yeah, we're going to do a, a special thank you, actually, first, uh, a special thank you to the Ninjas and to the Liquid Matrix folks for noting great prizes, and a special congratulations to the first place team, which was Zaz and Aaron, who just whooped everyone else's asses. Thank you very much. I ran into Zaz right after he won. He was packing around this huge bag of all the change, and he was talking about how he's going to go through the airport and not check it. Like, he's just going to carry it onto the plane because they can't separate you from your money, even though that's like 50 pounds of metal or something like that. <laughs> thought that was pretty brilliant. Next up, we have uh, so Social Engineering CTF and uh, also the Kids CTF. Hey, guys. Just want to say a quick thanks to a bunch of people. Uh, Core uh, for sponsoring the SE CTF and Qualys for sponsoring the SE CTF for kids, as well as uh, EFF, especially Marsha from EFF. Don't we love those guys? They... <laughs> they keep me out of prison, so I love them especially. Thank you. I um, want to thank to Sharon Conheedy and Kevin Mitnick for coming in, too, just especially to give us talks. And my team here that's on the stage, along with Jedi, Jim, Mr. X, and Billy for uh, helping out making this possible. Let's get right to the thing. Uh, right to the events. If I say out your name, we got uh, first and second place winners for the SECTF for kids. Run up as quick as you can. So first is Team Newark. They're first place for the SECTF for, ki for kids. We got them a cool helicopter with a spy cam on it, so that should be pretty neat, huh? <laughs> And uh, the second place winner was Team Mini Coop. Run, Mini Coop, run. <laughs> How you gonna call? Okay, while they're coming up, I'm gonna call out the, um, the SECTF this year was a major success. We had 10 women uh, join us in that competition, which if you sat in at that at all ever in the past, you know that we barely can get one woman to even show up. So 10, I just wanna shout out to the ladies. That was awesome, thank you guys. Gals, sorry, thank you. So our first place winner, Shane, same as last year, he won, he killed it this year. So, uh, Shane, come on, run him up if you can. And our second place winner, JC. JC, if you're in the audience, come run on up, please. We got some, some cool spy gear, um, some stuff like hidden cameras and pens and things like that. I got 34 seconds. I just want to say a couple quick shout outs. I want to thank Ping and Jordan because they made the podcast today really awesome. I want to thank Ace Hackware. They're probably new. Uh, you might have seen them in the vendors area, but they donated a lot of the stuff that we use for gifts. Holy mackerel, hang on. I completely, Shane, get your butt back up here. Shane. Shane. <laughs> I completely forgot, like, the most important thing. Isn't that stupid of me? Black badge. <laughs> Black badge. <laughs> In reality, I was thinking, he already has one from last year. He doesn't need two, so I'll keep it for myself. But that didn't work that way. So thanks to... <laughs> I tried to work. Thanks to Ace Hackware, and I want to thank to uh, Dead Attic, Nicole, Tool, and everyone else at DEF CON that helped us to make this a success. Pyro, Cheryl, you guys rock. Thank you, guys. All right, well, uh, we had the second annual DEF CON Kids this year. Actually, I really consider all of you in this room kids, but we're talking about age uh, 8 to 16 here. And there was over 100 kids there, as, long, as well as their parents, so at least 200 attendees total. This year we had four tracks with over a dozen classroom sessions and dozens of workstations as well. We kind of pulled the same thing off in the vendor area that we did in the kids area, which is we put the EFF right next to the NSA. Uh, and uh, 
It was nice to have both of those two as partners because I think that anything that the two of them can agree on must be right. So uh, we had four major contests, contests that uh, I'd like to ask the first, second, and third place winners to come on up here right now as I'm announcing it. Come on up to stage. The first contest this year, uh, the DOD hosted the first annual crime scene investigation. So at the, they, uh, Rio gave us uh, three hotel rooms in which we had crime scenes uh, set up in those hotel rooms and the kids had to come in and solve the crime. And uh, so for the first place we have team of, well I'll start with third place, sorry. Team Muddy, Isabel, took her 14 minutes and 45 seconds to solve, solve the crime scene. Come on up. Second place went to the insert uncreative name here, <laughs> I guess. So uh, Bella and Asu, come on up too. Second place took them eight minutes and 11 seconds to solve the crime scene. I think that, that time must be wrong because, uh, oh, yeah, I'm not quite sure how it worked because they have a score of 86. But the first place winners took uh, 12 minutes and 20 seconds to finish, but they had a score of 87, so I, I guess they had another point there. That was actually all of the DEF CON kids' founders were on the winning team for the DOD crime scene competition. So that was Olivia, Ali, and Sci-Fi, as well as Kryptina joined the team too. By the way, I don't see any of the kids. Where are you guys? Get up here. What? Oh, okay. All right. All right, so. All right. Great job, you guys. You already got your prizes, but stay up here for a little bit. So we're done. All right, so the second contest that we had this year, it was actually the second annual Sci-Fi Zero Day contest. Sci-Fi is right here. Last year, she showed the kids how to find Zero Days, uh, her time traveler bug, and Last year with AT&T, we disclosed 13 new zero days with all the kids. And uh, I guess the biggest one there was Smurfville. That's something all kids play, I'll tell you. You can get a New York City of Smurfville if you do this. So keep it in mind, it's still vulnerable. <laughs> and I could say that now because it's been a year since they didn't fix it. So save you a lot of Smurfberry money. Yep. So I thought that was really impressive, 13 zero days last year. This year, all of the kids together, we had the second annual contest, and we came up with over 80 new zero days in mobile apps with the time traveler bug. Yeah, right. And part of this contest was also letting the kids know what they do when they find a zero day. So we walk through the responsible disclosure process with them and help them fill out the forms and report it all responsibly. We're, helping, we're working with AT&T to do that because it's really hard to contact all these developers. I think the big difference these days is it's not just Microsoft and Oracle developing anymore. There's developers all over the world and they're all making this really simple mistake that even kids know how to fix. So hopefully we'll get it fixed. That's the whole point of the contest. So the winners of the contest here in third place was, uh, there was a team of three, Old Steven, Softwire, and T-Bone discovered 28 new zero days this weekend. In, in second place, Julie and Eric Saver discovered 40 new apps that had the time traveler bug, zero day, this year. And Kryptina received first place in the sci-fi competition. Just on her own, she discovered 49 new mobile apps that have the time traveler bug. And uh, going back really quick, I forgot to talk about the prizes for the DOD. We already gave them away, but pretty much they got a huge bag of swag that you could never buy in public. It was all stuff that you had to get from the DOD or NSA headquarters, as well as lock picking sets and some Radio Shack gift certificates and that kind of thing. The biggest prize here is definitely for the sci-fi competition. Um, we gave iPads to first, second, and third place as well as uh, 
$500, and Kryptina here is also going to get $1,000 for finding those, uh, those zero days today. Interestingly enough, as the, uh, as the second place winners here were, were working on the contest, they happened to find a brand new zero day uh, that's a little different. It, it goes into the clocks. And, um, okay. and uh, they uh, found a new zero day, and they're calling it the time zone, twilight zone bug. And they found at least five apps that currently have this. So we'll also disclose those to AT&T. And, and with that, um, I just made up a new kind of award that we're giving away right now, which is the MVH, the most valuable hacker, because I think you might have noticed you heard the name Kryptina quite a bit. She won a contest last year too. This year she won two contests. She hosted a contest of her own, and she spoke with her, with her dad, Tuck Savant, about uh, a, new, a new project that she's doing, Generation Bitcoin, teaching kids about finance and Bitcoin. So, Kryptina? Step forward. Here's the rock star, one of the rock stars of the future. All right. What is up, DEF CON? So, last year, a great friend of ours, a great goon, had a tragic accident. He is missed this year, and tragically missed. However, he is still alive, he is watching, and he will be with us soon. Jeff, thank you for facilitating a way that Chris at socialengineering.org could raise over $20,000 for Brad the Nurse Smith, who is missed more than anyone. Eddie Mize from 303 and DC 225 have come together to say thank you for helping your great friends. We love you, DEF CON. Thank you for supporting us. Have a great conference. Thanks a lot, man. Anytime, dude. Next up, I'm going to bring up somebody very special who you've all known for a very long time. This man puts an exceptional amount of time and effort into uh, giving you guys all kinds of new challenges and doing all kinds of things. Um, this year, he uh, gave you the DEF CON badge. Lost. Hi, DEF CON 20. How many people had fun today, this year? So whenever I do a complex challenge, I always get threatened if I don't at least give some of the secrets away at the closing ceremonies because everybody wants to know what the hell they've been staring at all these days and the time they've been standing in line. So I'm going to do a really, really quick just overview of some of the stuff that you guys have seen around. The clock eye circle in the front of the conference area that has the Egyptian head and the circle with the gears. If you solve the crypto on the outside, as well as take an anagram of the names of the eyes that are on the inside gear, it together will give you a solution to lead you to a website on the DEF CON site. Um, if you took the anagram without solving the outside, there were over a thousand variants you could get. With the outside, it took it down to one. So that's, that's the eye that's out there. And you could brute force it as well. In fact, we expected that, which is why I seeded, if those of you who did, I seeded with a bunch of BS crap files to waste your time. So. <laughs> um, you all want to know about the badges, so I kind of paid a little homage to a, to a hacker from history, um, Charles Dodson, otherwise known as uh, Lewis Carroll, the author of uh, Through the Looking Glass and Alice in Wonderland. The uh, certain number combinations that are on the badge are actually equations that show up in Alice in Wonderland. I'll put details up online later. The words that were on the badges were actually Roman numerals, not words, and only one of them was correctly formatted or formed. 
Um, the lanyards was a trinary system. It was trits, not bits, and it took all three lanyards in the proper order to solve. Uh, in the program, there was all kinds of stuff. There was a Pink Floyd cipher. Those of you who know the song, Wish You Were Here. The, the beginning of the song was actually instruction on how to create the key to a one-time pad. Um, so you think you can tell heaven from hell, so you swap those two. Uh, Blue skies from pain, you swap those two, etc., etc. So if you know the song, it's actually an instruction set on how to form the key to the one-time pad. Um, the different signs, uh, the microcontroller, uh, I will do a full write-up complete with instructions on how to generate it yourself and simulate it. It was doing a simple add. The add actually blew out or overflowed the 4-bit space, but it was actually calculating 20 because it's DEF CON 20. So I would like to thank Jeff for the opportunity to, to have done this. Without Jeff uh, facilitating my craziness, this never would happen. So please give him a hand. So, and I should have called him up sooner. Actually, I'm, I'm missing some of my sheets here. Um, uh, Kevin, are you out there? Can you come up here really quickly? So this guy rocked the badge challenge. He rocked the crypto, and I was impressed as hell. Give this guy a hand. He solved everything. So um, I will be doing full write-ups for stuff, as I promised. Uh, everyone always threatens my life that I I if I don't. Um, if you have specific questions or comments, I welcome them. Uh, you can also start a discussion on the DEF CON forums about the badges. So one more time, did you enjoy the badge this year? I mean... <laughs> for my benefit, how many of you out there met somebody else because of the badges this year? Okay. So uh, again, I would like to also thank uh, some key people. Actually, the goon badge uh, art was actually done by Ellen. Yeah. And I'd also like to thank Parallax for the, the tight schedule that we had. They did a great job. Everybody give them a hand, even though they're not here. So I, I know you guys will get sick of hearing about me when I, because I'll be coming back up in a second. So I'll, I'll go ahead and sit down. <laughs> right on. Oh, yeah. How much speed have you lost? All of it. Say that again. All of it. All of it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. So while uh, we're getting ready for the capture of the flag, guys, getting set up. Um, we have a lot of volunteers and so this is a quick little story of me showing up at the con and, uh, and one of my new goons, you know, cards me. He's like, where's your badge? <laughs> <laughs> and so the, so the guy next to me is like busting up like, oh my god, he's getting so busted. And, uh, and actually it's like, that's totally cool. That's exactly what he should do, right? So if he doesn't know who I am and I don't have a badge, he should stop me. So actually I'm going to buy that guy a drink. So you don't have to hide. I'm actually going to get you drunk tonight. So, uh, <laughs> okay, so uh, why don't we have DD Tech come up here and uh, start explaining what happened this year. All right, just a couple of quick things, and then I'll pass it to some of these other guys to announce the winners. Uh, we wanted to first of all thank Sherelle for all of her hard work this year. She did an incredible job. I think there were no less than 87 emails back and forth between her and I making this thing work. The other thing we wanted to make sure is, uh, how many of you didn't get a t-shirt from CTF Arena this year? Okay, not very many hands. How many did? I want to hear it, yeah. Well, we've got some more. We're going to be firing them through the talk right here. And I'm going to pass it over. So uh, last year, Jeff kind of dropped the bomb on us, and he was like, uh, next year's DC 20. Let's do 20 teams because, you know, it, the numbers line up. And that's more than twice the teams that we had when we started doing this four years ago. So this year, we, we did a, lo a little bit different. In the previous years, we always qualify everybody in an open qualifier online, 
where uh, we determine all the people that get invited to come, all the teams. This year, we sort of made it more of a, a world championship kind of thing, and we still qualified several teams, but in addition to our returning champion defending their title, we had nine pre-qualified teams from our open uh, qualifiers, and we had nine pre-qualified teams from CTFs around the world. We tried to pick uh, the best CTFs by, by size and by uh, history, CTFs that were, were sort of worthy of having uh, a qualifier. And then just to toss, uh, oops, just to toss uh, a wrench into the works, we pre-qualified somebody by selling a spot on eBay. So, <laughs> and, and we'd like to thank you for all the drinks this weekend. <laughs> the scotch was so, nice, thank you. Uh, in addition, we have a few thousand dollars left over that we're going to be donating to the EFF. So out of the teams that qualified, mostly out of the other uh, pre-qualified CTFs, we have, uh, several, we have teams from Europe, we have several teams from Russia, from Southeast Asia, and from the U.S. And uh, I'd like to thank, we, we had a few sponsors. With this size, we just couldn't uh, stomach the cost of getting all these t-shirts and stuff out to everybody. So uh, I'd like to thank Endgames, uh, OpenMalware.org, Hexrays, and uh, Occupy EIP. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we want to give a special shout out. One of the uh, the 20 teams that pre-qualified was kind of thrown under the bus. I think they know who they are. Um, we struck a deal with the, the organizers of the uh, National Collegiate Cyber Defense Competition that, uh, that the winner of that competition would get a seat uh, at DEF CON CTF. So it's, a, it's strictly a defensive competition. And I think their own advisor told them, uh, you're going to get reamed. <laughs> and uh, probably not too confidence inspiring, but they were a great bunch of kids from the University of Washington who uh, were terrific sports, came down, had a good time, and uh, hopefully got the CTF bug, and uh, we look forward to seeing them in the future. Big and most of going to help them feel better next year. That's right. Okay, so down to the actual competition, which uh, spanned three days. We did 12 hours Friday, 12 hours Saturday, and four hours today. And, of course, the teams pulled all-nighters probably uh, both of those nights trying to figure out what was going on to come in and drop some ponage on everybody else. Uh, in the end, uh, it was a pretty tight competition. Uh, t the uh, final competition was decided by uh, about 100 points out of a total of 2,500. Uh, so it was a nice competition with the lead changing hands inside the final 45 minutes when the teams couldn't see the scores. Okay, so every team did a great job. Uh, we're going to give a shout out to the top five in uh, reverse order here. Uh, so down at number five was the eBay cash cow, Occupy EIP. Okay, and the fourth spot was last year's champion, the Neuro European Nopsled team. I don't know if they're still here. Third spot went to another European team, the Rutards, perennial uh, top finishers. And then the top two teams traded the lead uh, back and forth all weekend. And uh, it was really close. Uh, coming in at number second with a really strong finishing, uh, as we see them play uh, strongly throughout the world in a lot of different uh, capture the flags, was Team uh, PPP. And uh, I think that leaves the folks that know who they are. The, the mega team, we call them, uh, came in with about 80 folks uh, rem remoting in from around the world. Uh, what's that? 80, 80, 80, yeah, 80, 80 people. And uh, that's uh, Team Samurai. Come on up. Yeah, only eight of them get black badges, so they're going to have to duke it out. Team Samurai!
Mega team. Mega team. <laughs> oh, it's signed it all. They're going to have to watch us eight badges, right? Yeah. We can watch that. Do you have 80 badges? <laughs> no, they all, they all get 1 16th of a badge. 1 16th. <laughs> Which is good for a $5 discount next year. So, uh, how do you want to do this? Do you want so, to now I want to say, hey, you know. Okay. All right, so another thing we want to do here is we want to call uh, special attention to DD Tech that's been producing this amazing contest for the last four years. They went from, I think, eight teams to 20 teams, and I think this is your smoothest contest ever. And I think that's an incredibly high note for them to... <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so we want to recognize their incredible achievement and also, like many things, it's time for them to move on. They're going to pass the torch this year. So we, well, pass the bits, pass the, the yeah, pa virtual. pass the bottle. So we have, uh, we have five black badges for them. We have uh, some special jackets we want to give you guys. And they're going to help with the uh, announcement for the call for papers for the next CTF organizers. So look for that soon. So if you want to torture yourself <laughs> like they do, <laughs> we are looking for new organizers. So thank you very much. Let's give them an incredible round of applause. All right, cool. Like, if I could get, I'm just kind of curious. Are any of you guys playing the drinking game? Anyone? I'm sorry. Yeah, we made a mistake. Team Samurai, we also have eight leather jackets for you. If you could come around to the side, we've got uh, your leather jackets. Yeah, the team captain and your, your selectees. All right, well, for those of you guys that didn't know, basically this year I put a list together of um, kind of the fucked up shit that we do on stage. By the way, drink. Um, and whenever we do it, you guys are supposed to drink. Um, according to Twitter and the 200 and some odd new followers that I got in the last hour, some people are playing it, but they may be playing it in their rooms. I'm obviously fucking hammered drunk drink. Um, let's see what else. Fuck, EFF, uh, red card, yellow card. That's four more drinks. But you guys are doing a great job with it, and I'm having a blast doing it. And I would like to give all of you guys drinks, so please come and get some. Yeah, he didn't, he didn't pause for a second there, did you, Dutcher? That was awesome. Next up, guys, Hacker Jeopardy. Your badge is bigger than my badge. It is not a badge, it's a wearable Herf gun. Nobody's old enough to remember that, G-Mark. Uh, 20 years ago tonight, Jeff said, let the games begin. And we began it in DEF CON 2. DEF CON 2, still actually have it. This year was the culmination of 20 years of, geez, the fuck did you get me into? <laughs> So, before we talk about that, let's do a scoring update on this year's Hacker Jeopardy with G Bark. Thank you, Win. Well, we had some firsts this year and we have some lasts. The first was we had 37 teams entered for competition. That's a new record. We had a four peat winner, which is a new record. And we also had a three way tie for zero in one of the games which was a new record. But it turned out that the three teams had consumed 57 beers combined, and it's understandable. So how do you break a tie like that? And we took a look. Whiskey. No, it was better than that. Nobody had the right answer. One of the guys put in their answer key, one quote or quote one quote equals quote one quote semicolon in their team name. And they did a sequel injection, and they won it. 
<laughs> and so Neg 9 made it to the finals. They lost there, but uh, we've patched that, so you can't try that next year. Our four-time winner, Nice Hat Gray, Pops, EMK, and JP Terror. They're probably taking this so for granted, I think they've already left for home, and we're going to just mail them their black badges. Oh, you are badges. Come on, get up here. Answer your email. Thank you. You guys are awesome. You guys are awesome. Yeah. Here come the badges. Gentlemen. Man, thank you. Congratulations. Oh, yeah. Thanks, Mark. Congratulations again. Congratulations, guys. Thank you. Awesome. Go that way. Go that way. Go that way. And I mentioned we also had some laughs. And uh, well, this was going to be a last for Win, but I'm going to turn the show over to none other than Win Schwartow. Come on. DEF CON has been a weight around my neck for 20 years, Jeff. It's a hell of a team. This thing began with me and a cork board and my wife writing on three by five cards. And now it's 20 people from Hackajar, Little Jen, Vanna 1, Vanna 2, Vanna 3. We had Bad Kitty, who's now Miss Kitty, come back, and G Mark, and there's all, Dave, and all these guys who put it together, a ton of goons. I quit. <laughs> I'm done. I am done. I am turning over the reins to G. Mark Hardy. He's going to be running Hacker Jeopardy from now on. However, you cannot get rid of me that easily. Next year, with Jeff's blessing, we are going to be stealing some more copyright information. We're going to start Hacker Jeopardy TNG, the next generation for the kids and let them know how it's all done. Do it right, and it'll be PG, so we won't be able to fucking curse in front of them. <laughs> so I've talked to a lot of folks. They're going to bring their kids next year, join in, and we're going to start it all over again, real simple, real small, so we'll be able to cater to both generations that are here. Thanks so much for 20 years. I appreciate it. So, uh, when, because, it, because you've helped so many people achieve greatness in drinking and liver damage, we would like to present you with your own black badge. Cool. Yeah. You. And your own leather jacket. This way we can all spot you. Fantastic, and thank you so much for all of your years, and we'll see you next year, man. Okay, lost. It's time for your other contest. So I'm not going to attack, I promise. So those of you who've been following the Mystery Challenge for the many years I've done that. <laughs> already know what this is. Those of you who are new, so Mystery Challenge was actually a retired contest and was brought back as an encore presentation for DEF CON 20. DEF CON 20, thanks to Jeff. Um, the trophy for the Mystery Challenge every year has always got to be something ridiculous to represent how ridiculously awesome the teams are that compete. For those of you who don't know, most of these teams spend all of DEF CON doing Mystery Challenge. I've got a number of teams that come to me and say the only reason I come to DEF CON is to compete in your challenge. <laughs> if I can get this thing up. <laughs> so while I'm doing this, uh, Snowchild, can you come up here? <laughs> so, <laughs> this is steel, not aluminum. It's heavy. As is tradition, part of the last bit of the challenge is getting the trophy home. Now, this, this is not for Snow Child. This is for the winning team. 
When I did my pre-qualification round and teams started registering, I noticed Snowchild's name started showing up multiple times on multiple teams. As is tradition in the Mystery Challenge, the, the social engineering had begun quite early, so I have a special trophy for him. It's a shake weight for women. <laughs> I hate having to give a single, uh, a single team the prize because you guys are all winners. They went through an incredible stuff. They built Tom servos out of crap they stole from around Vegas. Um, the, the stuff I've put them through is absolutely ridiculous. If you guys think the badge challenge is hard, it's nothing compared to mystery challenge. So all of my mystery challenge teams that have competed throughout the years, please just stand up and everyone give them a round of applause, please. So true to my word, Mystery Challenge is officially retired. Um, I will be, of course, doing some stuff for DEF CON next year. I hope, Jeff, uh, if Jeff is pleased with my work, I hope. Uh, could, uh. <laughs> <laughs> could I have a Psychoholics come up? Come up quickly. We're in a hurry. So this is the winner of this year's Mystery Challenge, the final year. Give him a hand. You want to say something? Lost? Some of my best friends are standing on this stage. Sorry, guys, my voice is a little hashed. I never would have met them if it hadn't been for your contest. Thank you. So those of you who are interested, I'll give a walkthrough on uh, Mystery Challenge as well. I know you guys like to, to read that stuff. Um, did anyone else want to? I mean, you guys got like a minute left. If anyone else wants to say something, you guys went through a living hell to get this. So, Anybody? Go, go, go. <laughs> Do the crap. <laughs> okay, I, I'd, I'd like to point out five of these people, this is their first DEF CON. He can't even drink yet. <laughs> So I, I just I want to thank uh, DEF CON for putting up with the, uh, the Mystery Challenge mayhem that goes on. I think one of my highlights is always going to be uh, the hotels assuming that we're carrying bombs around. So um, I'll give you a couple quick highlights in the 40 seconds here. So they had to do everything from doing a crimp from the Mighty Boosh that they had to memorize in less than like an hour to um, cr cracking crypto that was written on some skull faces. At the very end, they received a skull with an, uh, made out of paper mache and filled with plaster of Paris that had a thumb drive embedded inside that they had to chisel out. And then they would spend hours on the crypto that was in, on the thumb drive, only to find out that there was a micro SD card inside of the thumb drive that they had to crack open <laughs> to find. That's the kind of stuff I think of. Thank you. I forgot one thing. Please forgive me. Uh, I saved thanking Neil and Mar for Mystery Challenge time because I knew I was coming back up. Uh, Neil and Mar, wherever you are, please stand up. They, were, uh, they worked so many nights with me all night long. I was on Skype with Neil working on stuff for you guys like till the wee hours of the morning. So give them a big hand. I have a special guest again to come up to uh, the stage. He'd like to talk to you guys a little bit. Barcode. So, if you were here last year, you may remember me as the hacker formerly known as Super About to Die. Uh, <laughs> I didn't, FYI. Uh, this resulted in the Blood Code Challenge and an overwhelming amount of support from you guys, which has had a tremendous impact on my life over the last year. And uh, long story short, I'm not dead yet. So whichever foreign power or intelligence agency I forgot to give a ninja badge to, I'm super sorry about that. <laughs> but you're gonna have to do a lot better than that. <laughs> So 
So we did, uh, we did decide that this year would be the last year we would do the ninja badge and the ninja party. Uh, honestly, we're, I'm fucking old, man. Like, I'm super, I'm super tired. I can't do this anymore. We, we, we got tired of trying to outdo ourselves. We kind of joked that next year we were going to have to get, like, Kia to give everybody a ninja-branded car and have, like, a huge demolition derby on Las Vegas Boulevard. And we all kind of laughed and then thought, shit, we could probably get them to do that. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but when we were trying to figure out what to do this year to kind of go out with a bang, we thought it's DEFCON 20. What were, we, what were we all doing 20 years ago? And we were all phone freaks. I mean, most of us in the group were anyway. We were on the phone. So we thought, well, how can we bring that nostalgia back? Let's do something with phones. And that's how NinjaTel was born. So we built a GSM phone network. We said, we'll give everybody phones. We'll put a bunch of old services like popcorn and 1-800 Skypage and call ATT and all kinds of that stuff on the network. But it turns out you can't just Google, how do I start a cell phone company? So starting at TourCon last year, uh, we got together and we cobbled together a bunch of USRPs and obscure Chinese hardware and figured out that uh, OpenBTS doesn't really work as well as one might hope. So we forked the shit out of it into something we lovingly refer to as Ninja BTS. Uh, and as usual, we continued work on it through Wednesday of this week <laughs> and, uh, and you know, flashed the phones Wednesday night. The coolest part of this whole thing for me was we actually got the voice of AT&T Pat Fleet, like that woman that says AT&T when you call. We actually got her to do our voiceover stuff. So when, let, let me... <laughs> So hearing her, hearing that woman that said AT&T for like all those years, like say Ninja Networks, like I got like, I got <laughs> chills, but I, I, she called me on my phone in the car and I, did, I didn't know who it was and I, and, uh, I, I said, hey, and she said, this is Pat. I'm like, I'm, I'm sorry, who are you looking for? She's like, no, this is, this is Patricia Fleet. And I was like, <laughs> and my person in the car with me wasn't a hacker. Like, who the hell is Patricia? I'm like, just shut up. You shut up. You don't fuck this up for me. <laughs> And, here, and having a conversation with her for 15 minutes, let me tell you, if you were ever a freak, having an interactive conversation with that woman is fucking bizarre. <laughs> like, so, so we had a huge amount of help from some really cool sponsors that, that not the kind of people you might think would normally do this, but seriously, Facebook, Lookout, Zynga, yeah, Zynga, like the Farmville people, and All Join by Qualcomm. You didn't see their logos on any of our stuff. Like, it wasn't on the truck. It wasn't on the... Like, it really wasn't anywhere. And I think that's really... It's really cool of them to let us do that. They let us keep this whole thing ninja branded. It really helped behind the scenes and provided a lot of support. And these guys paid for those phones and paid for that van and paid for all of that stuff and were super cool about letting us do anything we wanted without, without rules. They didn't tell us anything we couldn't do. So we thank them for that a lot. Like, these guys... This wouldn't have happened unless they let, let us do that. Um, and I like to say I'm the most visible member of Ninja Network, so I often joke that my title should be Chief Credit Getter because I get all the credit for a lot of the stuff these guys do. A lot of people, it's, it's kind of like my thing, just like Caesar did with Ghetto Hackers and a lot of people before that. I get a lot of credit for the like the work of the ninjas. And uh, a lot of the work of this isn't done by me personally, obviously, it's done by the whole group, but specifically Chris Nelson, uh, Brandon Crichton, Amanda Wozniak, and Eric McCroskey, for the last couple really cool badges we did, they did 90% plus of it. I mean, these, it would not have happened without them. And I walk around all day and like, I get a lot of like, hey, 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 but those guys that you wouldn't recognize walking by in the hallway necessarily because they keep a super low profile, they did a huge amount of work on this stuff, on everything, on the network and the badges, and they deserve almost all of the credit. And I personally thank them very, very, very much for all of their work because it wouldn't be possible without them. Uh, <laughs> So this is, you know, this pro probably will be the last year we do a Ninja Badger party in its current iteration. It's just too hard to keep up. Uh, but that doesn't mean we're done here. This is my 17th straight DEF CON, and I certainly don't plan on breaking that streak now. So on behalf of everybody at Ninja Networks, thank you guys for all the support over the years. And one way or another, we'll see you at DEF CON 21. All right. We also have a bunch of mentions we'd like to do for other uh, people that have helped contribute with uh, contests and events this year. Uh, Panzer, Neely, you guys rock doing the photo booth. For those of you who didn't stop by, too bad. Right beside the EFF shooting booth where the guy was taking the pictures, that's for a yearbook for DEF CON 20. So if you got in there and you got your pictures in there, be sure to visit their site and be sure to get the information. Sky Talks, Blue and Banshee, thank you so much for taking over Sky Talks for me. You guys have done an amazing job with it the last couple of years. 
Thank you to DEF CON for putting together the movie night as usual. Redbeard for the Beard and Mustache Championship and something cool this year. He made it to where you could bribe the judges to affect the score and somebody donated $200 to the EFF to swing the, the vote. Um, we also have uh, Hacker Karaoke, Dr. Strangebot. That was kind of a new one. I let that one come in like four days before con uh, started and the whole thing with that was that those guys, if you didn't stop by, they had a mobile like robot and you had to hack the robot to be able to take control of it and be able to ma manipulate it and work with it. And they've been talking to me about some of the stuff they want to do next year and it's going to be an amazing, amazing contest. Thank you to everybody that helps run the hardware hacking village, the Wi-Fi village, lock picking village, goon band, recognize. <laughs> Enzo for doing work with the beverage cooling contraption, by the way, you people are fucking lazy. Beverage cooling contraptions, one of the coolest contests. I've seen these crazy weird contraptions that have come out. Do you know how they won this year? Yeah, ice. They dumped beer through ice and won. <laughs> Get better. You guys are geniuses. Come on. Where's the like high pressure nitrogen and all kinds of craziness? Uh, DEF CON exploit hackathon. This was an awesome contest, and in fact, it seemed to be so awesome that no one won. <laughs> Patrick's going to bring it back next year, but you guys have got to really, really bring it hard. Um, Toxic Barbecue went very, very well. There were tons of attendees. We uh, very much appreciate you guys going out and checking that out and helping support that. And uh, I know this is a little personal, but I've got to give mad love to 303. If I didn't have the organization behind me, and all the time, I get told, Oh, well, you're the head of 303, right? No, guys, I'm third generation at best. Please give love to 303 for all that they've given you over the times with the parties. Uh, same thing with Ninja Networks, DOC. You guys are amazing. <laughs> Next, we're going to move into fundraising. But before I call up our first person, I want to point out Eddie Mize our uh, local artist here, also another 303-er, has designed tons of absolutely amazing, amazing shirts. These are all helping fund, uh, sorry, helping uh, send money to the EFF. And you guys should go buy these up. He still has a ton of these left. He's going to be right outside the contest area after this. Please come buy up these shirts to help support the EFF. First fundraiser we're bringing up. Oh, it's her. God. Mohawk Con. By the way, for you who don't know, this is my lovely wife, Erin. Hello. Hi. I'm Ed, and I am with Mohawk Con, along with my lovely cutting crew who is over there somewhere about to throw some beads at some people. Uh, we raised a whole bunch of money this year. First off, I want to recognize one of our biggest donors. Snipe, are you in here? Where's Snipe? Somewhere? Well, she's awesome, and she raised $1,500 for her single mohawk for the EFF. We raised, um, we had four different groups that we were donating to this year. The EFF, we raised $4,333 for. Hackers for Charity, we raised $2,152. We also had two hacker spaces that had donation boxes up there. Denhack, my personal favorite hacker space, raised $102. Alpha One Labs out of Brooklyn raised $259. That means the grand total of money raised for Mohawks this year was $6,846. Stand up if you got a Mohawk at Mohawk Con. Thank all of you. Happy DEF CON. Thank you. Next up, be the match. All right. I'm going to do some uh, good news, bad news. So I just want to tell you what we've been doing for the last three years. Uh, year one, we had 95 people sign up for Be The Match Bone Marrow Donor Registry. Year two was 161. 
And this year, we got 232 people to sign up. In addition to... In addition to that, we raised over $3,300 as well. Uh, the really cool part is that last year, out of that 161, I know you guys all think about numbers, out of that 161 people, we actually got someone who registered and was a match just eight months later. So it's extremely serious. You gotta, if you can, please register. So now the bad news is that our community has been growing um, I've been coming here since DC 14, and I've seen it just really expand. Um, and as a, as, a bone de- um, sorry, as a bone marrow donor myself, I've seen numerous personal stories. I've heard them, and I've become acutely aware of how many of us actually need help. Uh, more and more are becoming uh, in need of these kind of things. Uh, so as a result of that, even though I like to put out these numbers, you can go online and sign up. Please don't wait for DEF CON 21. Uh, and my actually ultimate goal is that one year I'm going to ask you guys to sign up and nobody will be able to because you're all already registered. So thank you very much. Next up, we have Jason Street with the official Blood Code Challenge. Thanks, guys. Um, I'd like to start off with just a couple numbers. We, uh, we, had, we couldn't even hit 100 last year because there was just an overwhelming number. First hour, fully registered. They, couldn't, they were turning people away after the first hour, the, the first blood code. This year, 160 on the first day and uh, over 110 on the next. It's like two days of blood code, and it was just overwhelming. It, it, it gets to you the fact that and I, we got a contest badge, and I wasn't expecting that this year to, to be a contest because it's not a contest. It's a statement to what this community is about. It's a statement to how we get together and how we help each other. And it's like that's the message that needs to come out more. I wish I could awkward hug all of you. It's like because it's just it, it's a great community, and that's, that's what we do here. And I, I really appreciate it, and thank you. I need one. That's it, I'm out. So just so you know, uh, Blood Code generated 278 units of blood. And it was the biggest blood drive that they had seen, the biggest amount she'd seen in her entire seven years of collecting it. And here's something very cool. One of the reasons uh, they were able to collect so much blood is when people go through, they have to they survey them, and they normally have a 30 to 40 percent reject rate. Well, you ain't no rejects because basically the reject rate here. 10%. Your blood is good. <laughs> Next up, I'd like to call up the EFF. Where are represented? There we go. <laughs> Do you have the list? The numbers? All right, well, thank you, everybody. Um, I want to thank so many people who have helped support us over the course of this DEF CON. Uh, I'm going to run through a lot of names. Hopefully I won't forget everybody, but big thanks to Hackajar, Little Jenny, and all of Vegas 2.0 for the summit and the sponsors of the Data Liberation Fund and ISEC Partners, Performers 8-Bit Weapon, DJ Jackalope, and Dual Core, Eddie Mays from the 303 crew, uh, the Mohawk Con, Hackers and Gun and Stealth, uh, DEF CON Kids and Nico, Hacker Jeopardy, which raised $3,199 for EFF, which was the winning score. Um, capture the flag, fail panel, Ninja Networks for the pins, and the phone auction at the summit, which raised a tremendous amount of money. People really love those phones. And all the people who found other creative ways to support us here. Okay, we got some, uh, some numbers for you. The info booth raised $58. 
the uh, firearm simulator, $3,620. Mohawks, $4,333. Eddie Mears with the artist with his great t shirts which you can still get outside the contest area, $3,500. The Summit, $1,500. $1,789. $15,000. $15,000. $15,000. And a Hacker Jeopardy for a total of $30,380. So thank you, thank you very much. And then also, so many of you came by the booth and supported us. We've had our best year raising money, getting members at the booth. Uh, we'll have the numbers later, but it was better than last year. So thank you all very much. And thanks especially to DT and the Goons. Marsha? We love you. Thank you so much. We couldn't do this without your support, and we are so humbled. Thank you. Okay, so we're winding down. We have only a couple things left, but I want to take this time to ask you, uh, well, one announcement and one question. So uh, the announcement is, if you haven't heard, and we're trying to get it out there, is we're selling human badges. If you want another one or if you want another ten, I was so sh uh, <laughs> worried that I was going to run out of badges like that's never happened. <laughs> and uh, so I just ordered a ton of badges, but now we have some leftovers. So I'm selling them for $40. And I'm sure you know they're complete dev, uh, dev environments and it's really hard to brick them because there's two ROMs and you can copy from one to the other and all of that. So if you want to get them for your friends or your school or whatever, we've got them up in the front and I don't want to have to haul them all the way home. So I'd appreciate, grab some badges, that would be great. The second thing is I'm curious on everybody by a show of hands, since it was DEF CON 20 and we wanted to do so much with extra contests and extra awards and crystal method. We raised the price to $200 just for this year. And we're going to lower it back next year. But um, so many people said this is such a rocking party. How are you going to top it next year? And I said, well, I'm not going to top it. I can't, you know, because I don't have as much money next year. And so I'm wondering, how many people thought they got a good value for the $200? So, so my question is, should I drop it or keep it the same? How much insanity do you want? Raise it. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to raise it unless the inflation hits like 100% or something. But so, uh, so I was thinking maybe like, what's that? Three bills next year. Oh, oh, free booze. Well, yeah, that was the other thing we did is we had some free beer that Thursday night for the people who showed up early, and that seemed to go over really well. But I could see that could be a losing battle. You could probably go broke giving away free beer here. Next year, DEF CON will be old enough to drink. Yeah, because next year will be DEF CON 21. Um, okay, so it, so it doesn't sound like you're too concerned about the price because I'm, I've been trying for a year to book craft work, and I'm going to try all next year to book craft work. And uh, they're a little bit more expensive, I think, than Crystal Method, even though they're both awesome in their own genres. But uh, okay, that's great. That's the feedback I wanted. So um, next year, yeah. I'm, while I'm thinking about next year, I think I'm going to fulfill a promise that I made last year. I shook on it. And um, for those of you who know me, I, I don't renege on promises. <laughs> so I'm going to go over here. So you have to understand, he's made this promise for, what, three years in a row now? This is beautiful. We've been waiting for this. Time for Jeff to get his hawk. Now, 
Jeff failed to mention that he has like six different meetings with incredibly important people around the world in the next couple of weeks. So my lovely wife, Edward, is being nice enough to use a little guide just to make it to where he can have somewhat of an okay haircut. You know, it's actually really nice fulfilling a promise. Because <laughs> now they can't bug me. <laughs> true. That's true. Now, but I haven't decided. Don't I have to donate money to the EFF for this? Of course. I was, um, I was thinking maybe $10,000. <laughs> <laughs> What do you think? That's probably a pretty good thing. <laughs> what, what's she doing up there? <laughs> that looks great. I haven't picked a color. What do you think? I, I always thought that I'd look good in blue, but people say no. <laughs> Somebody's going to have to organize a show of hands. What colors do we have left? <laughs> He's got my DNA. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do need a drink, even if it's Kahlua. <laughs> it's actually an awesome ending to an awesome con. I like sharing it all with you, so this has been fantastic. Now, don't forget, there's an after party. It's uh, 2600 Net and Telefreaks throwing a party tonight if you can find an invite. Also, we're spinning DJs at the pool for those of you who still want to chill out. So spread the word and probably see you out at the pool later. <laughs> I think this is going to be like in stereo TV, I'm sure, on the net. <laughs> Does anybody have a mirror? It's absolutely wonderful. Fantastic. <laughs> I'll drink to that. Thank you very much. See you next year.